Hey Nano Tank Lovers. Today we're going to talk about aging water, why you should age your water, especially when you have tap water. People do recommend you age it with RO water as well. We have a few things going on here and we'll get into that. First we just have the regular tap water. You're going to see the footage of me preparing that in a minute. We have this water here. I put a root tab in it about a week and a half ago. I wanted to see how much would leach and I also added a teaspoon of alkaline buffer to see what would happen to the pH and to, to the KH with just that level because I, I just started working with it and I've been very like pinches of it because I don't want to change anything too much. And then back here I just have a thing of uh, tap water that's had a couple heaters in it for ooh, a week or so. So I want to see how the evaporation, how quickly it affects the parameters. It's really really slow. Let me tell you. So you take your bucket, pop her in the sink, and you want to run cold water, not warm water. The warm water is going to be sitting in your pipes for a while. The warm water will contain heavy metals, and there's a high chance it will contain some lead or some copper, and will poison your shrimp. So let's fill up our bucket. While it's filling, is a good time to put in your prime to dechlorinate. I just use my turkey baster. And get a couple drops. I do need to get a little pipette because of the water volumes that I'm working with. But literally a couple drops. Alright, let's keep filling. So that's good enough for me. It's about three gallons of water. So now I'm gonna go uh, pop it over by the tanks. All right guys, so this water is cold, it's dechlorinated, but we need to let it warm up to room temperature for a day. That's, that's the biggest thing about aging the water is you're gonna let it warm up. Now I'm gonna test the water for you and I'll test it tomorrow morning and we'll compare the two to see why you age the water. And because of where I have my tank in my house, I do cover the bucket with a towel just to keep dust and debris out. Uh, keep any organic things, hairs, uh, leaves. I have this palm tree right above it. So keep any things that fall off of that out of the water. All right, just gonna test the water. Got my five mil in each one. Gotta shake this for 30 seconds. And you do this for a minute. I do ammonia. I'm just doing this for you guys. I know what my tap water is. I like to leave the thing behind so I know what I'm testing. I'm gonna need the high range pH. I already know that. This is where my tap water comes out. <laughs> That's uh, at least Probably an 8.3. Very purple. I believe it's between the, the 8.2 and the 8.4. So I'm going to say 8.3. That's the biggest reason why you age your water. We'll see tomorrow. But I'll also show you these other readings. My like KH. Two drops. GH. Two drops. Can you see how green that is? It's green. I do have to wait a minute for these ones, but yeah, my, my tap water comes out above eight. I'm not putting that in my tank. You have to let it age for a day. Okay, so it's been about five minutes. I can show you guys. My water contains zero nitrates, zero nitrites, but I'm gonna get a reading on the ammonia. Between two, or 0.25 and 0.5. This ammonia reading is caused by the prime. When it removes the chlorine and the chloramine, it creates ammonia. It also detoxifies the ammonia, so you don't have to worry about it though, so your beneficial bacteria will take care of it. It detoxifies it for 48 hours, so you this water is safe to use for 48 hours. After that, you do have to redose the prime in order to detoxify the ammonia again. Good morning, nano tank lovers. It's the next day. Today, I'm just gonna do the pH. You don't have to retest the ammonia, nitrate, nitrite, KH, GH. They're not gonna change overnight. The the two most important things I already mentioned in the video. I actually said they are both the most important. Um, is the temperature and the pH. So the temperature has now relatively equalized, so I'd be okay to put it in the tank because I use tap water. I do drip it in no matter what, whether it's a top up or water change. 
All right, let's do the pH test. So the regular pH is reading still pretty high, 7.6. So that's my high range pH result. It's good if you look at this in the sunlight, so I'm just gonna do that real quick and let you know what I see. Based on my test results here, it's hard to see in the camera and the lighting, uh, but I looked at them in the sunlight. It's a little darker than the 7.4, but lighter than the 7.8, and pretty much right on the 7.6. So my pH equalized down from an 8.3, I said it was, down to a 7.6. That pH drop is enough to shock the shrimp and kill them if I were to have put that in yesterday. And now the temperature is equalized, the pH is equalized, I could add this water freely into my tank. That is why you age water. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure to like and subscribe to the video. Leave a comment below if you have any questions and I'll see you next time.